Okay, today we're going to be talking about the Admit Lesson, and I thought it was very appropriate that one of our songs tonight was Waymaker, um, talking about how Christ guides us through our life and makes a way to break those chains of sin in our lives. Um, I had a beautiful translator, Malenka, in uh, Bolivia, and she sang that song for me both in Spanish and English, and that just reminded me of that's what we're talking about tonight, is how to break those chains of sin. Okay, principle four. Openly examine and confess my faults to myself, to God, and to someone I trust. Happy are the pure in heart, Matthew 5, 8. Step five. We admitted to God, to ourselves, and to another human being, the exact nature of our wrongs. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed, James 5.16. If you're wondering, this is my clicker <laughs> to move the next slide. Uh, this week we're focusing on confessing, admitting our sins, all the dark secrets of our past to another person. Why admit my wrongs? This part of principle four is often difficult for people. Why admit my wrongs to someone else? Many of us have been keeping secrets almost all of our lives. Every day those secrets take a toll on us. They make us a slave to sins of our past and they can isolate us. The toll we pay is loss of self-respect and energy as well as bondage or slavery to the old codependent habits. Admitting out loud those secrets strips them of their power. They lose much of their hold on us when they're spoken. Still, we are afraid to reveal our secrets to another person, even someone we trust. We somehow feel if we have everything to gain and nothing to lose, we have everything, to, sorry, we somehow feel if we have everything to lose and nothing to gain by telling our secrets. I want you to hear the truth tonight. That's wrong. Do you know what we really have to lose by telling our secrets to another? We lose our sense of isolation. Somebody is going to come alongside of us and our sense of aloneness will begin to vanish as we grow in that relationship and have someone to listen to us. We will begin to lose our unwillingness to forgive. When people accept and forgive us, we start to see that we can forgive others. We will lose our inflated false pride. As we see and accept who we are, we begin, to we, we begin to gain true humility, which involves seeing ourselves as we really are and seeing God as he really is. The same is true if you are feeling unworthy and overly critical of yourself. This will provide balance in your life. We will lose our sense of denial. Being truthful with another person will tear away our denial will begin to feel clean and honest. Now that you know what you have to lose when you admit your wrongs to another, let's talk about the three benefits that you will gain. What do we gain from admitting our wrongs? First, we gain the healing that the Bible promises in James 5.16. As it says here, therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. So the confession to each other will allow you to be healed. So it's healing. We gain freedom. Our secret we have kept, that has kept us in chains and bound, frozen, unable to move forward in any of our relationships with God or with others, we're breaking those chains. Admitting our sins snaps the chains so God's healing can start. 
Psalms 107, 13 through 14, says, They cried out to the Lord in their troubles, and he rescued them. He led them from the darkness and the shadow of death and snapped their chains. Unconfessed sin, however, will fester. And in Psalm 32, 3 and 4, David tells us what happened to him when he tried to hide his sins. When I did not confess my sins, I was worn out from crying all day long. My strength was completely drained. Openness gives us wholeness and strength. Secrets give us a divided mind. Our front that we try to show others to hide our secrets and the real truth. And that drains us of our strength, being divided like that. There's a saying, if you want to clear out the stream, you need to get the hog out of the spring. To allow God's healing power to flow through to you, you need to clear out those sins and confess them, both to God and to another. So admit and turn from your sins. Remember that the only sin that God can't forget, forgive is the one not confessed. The other thing we gain is we gain support. When you share your inventory with another person, you get support. The person can keep you focused and provide feedback. When your old friend denial surfaces and you hear Satan's list of excuses, that's really not so bad. They deserved it. It wasn't my fault. That support person can be there to challenge you with the truth. They can also keep you from spinning out in self-doubt and self-deprecation as well. But most of all, you need that other person to simply listen to you and hear what you have to say. How do I choose someone? Choose carefully and choose prayerfully. You don't want someone to say, you did what, I can't believe it, expressing shock and awe, someone who is judgmental. We don't need a judge and jury, we don't need shock and awe, we need somebody who can empathize and listen. And remember in Romans 3, 23 through 24, and I'm just focusing on the highlighted portions here, but. I do ask that you go back and read the full verse. All have sinned, yet now God declares us not guilty. If we trust in Jesus Christ, who freely takes away our sins. And also remember 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. You need someone to listen. I find it works best to choose someone who is growing in Christ and is familiar with the eight principles and 12 steps of CR. Also choose someone of the same sex whom you trust and respect. How do you learn to trust and respect someone? Participate. Be here for, if you can, for our family meals at six. You'll get to know people. Participate in the large group, the testimonies and the lessons. Also the open share groups that start at eight o'clock. You'll get to know people. Solid Rock Cafe at 8.30, that's another opportunity to get to know someone and learn to trust them. Also we have step studies. That's where we really go in depth into the steps and principles, and that's a good place to find someone that you can trust. Because here at CR, we're about empathy, listening, not fixing, not judging. Okay, another thing you could do is ask your sponsor or accountability partner if you have one. Next slide. Um, that accountability partner would have completed steps four or five, uh, principle four and steps four or five. The process tends to go more smoothly if that person's familiar with what you're doing and they'll have a sense of empathy 
And if the person can share personal experiences, you'll have a healthy exchange, both listening and sharing. Set up an appointment. This is very important. A time without interruptions. Put away the phones, any other distractions. Don't go somewhere where there's a TV. Um, if you're married, this is a time where you might you need to be away from your spouse so that you can have a private time with this person that you're going to share with. If you have children, find someone to watch the kids. And it usually takes two or three hours to share your inventory, maybe more. Um, and if you need more time, just plan to make another appointment. Okay, let's go over the guidelines for that meeting now. First of all, start with prayer. Ask for courage, humility, and honesty. And here's just a, a sample of how you might pray. You can personalize this. Um, this is also in the step study guide that goes through the admit lesson, which is the book number three. Um, God, I ask that you fill me with your peace and strength during the sharing of my inventory. I know that you have forgiven me for my past wrongs, my sins. Thank you for sending your son to pay the price for me so that my sins can be forgiven. During this meeting, help me be humble and completely honest. Thank you for allowing the chains of my past to be snapped. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So something that focuses on the task that you're doing and praying about honesty and openness and peace. Also, read through the principal four verses in the participant's guide, which is um, on page 25 of the step studies. That will help to focus your mind on the task at hand and why you're doing that task. Keep your sharing balanced with strengths and weaknesses and end in prayer. Thank God for the tools that he has given you and for the complete forgiveness you found in Christ. And just to reiterate the two verses that I think are most important when we think about sharing with someone and admitting those, those sins. 1 John 1, 9, but if we confess our sins, he will forgive our sins because we can trust God to do what is right. He will cleanse us from all the wrongs we have done. And also James 5.16. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. By admitting those sins in your life, you're breaking the chains and taking away the power and the, of fear. So let that healing begin. Now I'm going to ask Pat, uh, Roby to come up and do the invitation, and then we'll have our closing song and the serenity prayer.